Hi, this is Michael Pavlovich, and I'm going to be walking you through some of the new features of ZBrush for R5. Our main focus is going to be the new panel loop features, but along the way we're going to talk about some other cool stuff. First thing we're going to need is a Z-Sphere DynaMesh, and there's a couple different ways to get that. If you hit the comma key on your keyboard, that'll bring up Lightbox, and you're going to see there's a couple DynaMesh options in here. Here's a DynaMesh 32, which would work for our purposes, but we're going to make one manually just in case you need a refresher. So I'm going to hit comma to close Lightbox. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to grab a Z-Sphere Primitive. I'm going to drag that out of my canvas, go into Edit Mode, hit Make Poly Mesh 3D so it's Sculptable Geometry, open the Geometry tab, and underneath the DynaMesh menu, go ahead and open that up. We can go ahead and turn off Project, we don't need that for now. And I'm going to make this a 32 resolution DynaMesh. So as soon as I hit this button, you're going to see my topology changes. If I hit Polyframe, you're going to see we have a nice low res DynaMesh to start working with. The next thing I'm going to do is hit X to make sure we're working across the X axis and symmetry. And I'm going to turn on our floor to make sure we're oriented correctly and we know where a flat plane is while we're making our object. Uh, if I go down to the bottom here and zoom in, it might be kind of hard to see on your computer, but there's a blue line pointing forward. That's our Z forward. And so this is going to be the front of whatever we decide to make. And the next step is just going to be making our basic shape. I'm going to need the move brush for this. and. A quick way to get that is hit B for bring up your brush menu, hit M to narrow down to the M brushes, and then V to grab the move brush. And I'm just going to make a really big brush size, I'm just going to move this thing around. And you're going to notice as I'm moving this thing around, I'm starting to get some stressed polygons are getting really big. If I want to grab some more fidelity out of these, all I have to do is control drag and I get a new DynaMesh mesh. Um, so it gives me all that resolution back. And I have no idea what I'm making. Um, so it should be interesting. Uh, I'm just kind of making shapes here, and I'm actually more interested in getting you the information than actually making something cool. So if I make something cool, it's going to be by accident. But we'll see how it goes. So again, just a really big brush size, pushing stuff around. And while you're dynameshing, I'm going to turn polyframe off. While you're dynameshing, all the modeling tools available to you, all your normal modeling is um, available to you with dynamesh. If I can control. Uh, hold down control, I can mask an area, I can control click out here to invert, I can hit W to bring up transpose, I can click along my surface to find a surface normal that I like, and then I can just, uh, I can hold down shift and drag this out, or I don't hold down, I don't have to hold down shift, and I can just drag this around if I want to, uh, I can even go hit R, go into rotate, and just drag that transpose line along my surface, kind of anchor it, and then I can just kind of rotate this out, you know, depending on what I want to look for. Um, you know, it's all up to you. And if you get to a point where you notice you actually don't like the direction you're going in, you can actually go up here to this history slider and just kind of drag back and kind of go, you can actually drag all the way back if you want to. Um, but you just kind of find a point that you like. You did a little bit too much experimenting, you can always drag back to a point that you like and uh, to start from there. As well as you can uh, bring up the trim brush, you can bring up polish brushes, you can bring up clay buildup if you want to. Um, I'm going to try to keep the surface really smooth, so I'm just going to basically use the, the move brush and let's get some nice smooth interesting shapes going if you want to you can hold down shift and smooth this out and you also might notice as I'm control dragging my DynaMesh and it's re-DynaMeshing my mesh uh, it's actually maintaining its volume a lot more and that's actually a function of this new feature over here under the deformation menu they have um, when you polish something, and we'll get into this more detail later when I actually give you panel examples, uh, but you have a polish by features, you have an open circle and a closed circle. These actually either maintain volume or don't maintain volume, and again, I'll show you with better examples later on. Uh, but that functionality is built into DynaMesh right now. So as you're DynaMeshing, it's actually maintaining its volume a lot better than it has in previous ZBrush iterations. And the next thing we need to do is add polygroups to this thing. We're going to use Slice Curve Brush for that. Uh, but first I'm going to continue to refine the shape a little bit more. I'm trying to get some surface area in here for some stuff I need to show you later. And don't feel like you need to get this part of the process perfect. I mean, get it as close as you can. You know, get all your forms in there that you like. Um, but as you continue to refine, um, you're actually going to get a lot of leeway to actually make changes as you go. So don't feel like you have to nail it now. You can kind of experiment, uh, experiment a little bit or maybe get it most of the way there and then kind of apply your panels and see and the process is fast enough to where even if after you apply your panels 
and you don't like it or you do and it's a variation, uh, you can go through the whole process. It's going to take me a while because I'm having to explain as I go. But um, once you get good at this, it's actually really, really fast to just go and do iteration upon iteration and not really have to pay for it with time. It's all experimental and it allows you that leeway. So uh, I think this shape will kind of work. Let's add something up here. And if you want to make major changes, you can hit uh, transpose and you can go from the top here. Just drag a line out and you can make overall length or overall width changes. Oops, let's drag from the middle here and then just drag this out. And again, you know, once your polygons get squashed, you can go ahead or start stretching. You can control drag and get all that shapes back. And we'll say this is good enough. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and slice this guy up into polygroups. And um, again, there's multiple ways to get to do polygroups in ZBrush, but this is the way I'm going to show you now. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and uh, polish this bottom area down. I'm going to turn my floor off. I don't need that anymore. I think I'm oriented enough. So I'll go ahead and smooth this out. And let's go ahead and make sure I don't have any, a whole lot of undercuts here. Smooth this out. Okay, so here's our basic shape. So now I'm going to splice, uh, slice this guy up. I'm going to hold down Control Shift, and uh, I have Slice Curve selected. You probably have Select Rectangle by default when you hold down Control Shift. Uh, so hold down Control Shift, select that, and grab Slice Curve. It's actually down here. And then every time you hold down Control Shift, you're going to have Slice Curve available to you until you change it again. And I'm going to turn on Polyframe, and I'm out of perspective mode because as I'm slicing across the object here, it's going to go and slice through to the other side perfectly and keep it symmetrical. Um, the the slice curve isn't symmetrical if you start slicing it this way, and I'll show you a way around that, but we'll go ahead and start from the side. And so slice curve, you hold down Control shift and drag out, you're going to get a line with a gradient. Now where that gradient points to is where it's going to slice um, a polygroup. Uh, you do have to be a little bit careful though, if you hold down Control shift and you drag through and you don't quite make your way all the way through the object, it's going to slice, and it's actually creating a slice of geometry here. You can see these triangles, and it makes a perfect line through here. Uh, but where I, that line didn't continue through, it just kind of made a poly group, but it just used the pre-existing geometry. It didn't slice it. So if you want nice, clean slice lines, make sure you go all the way through. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll slice a little some sort of vehicle. So I'm going to say this is like a seat area. Uh, so I'm dragging out my line. If I want to reposition this line, I hold down the space bar, and I can move this around. And again, where it's pointing up is where it's going to make that polygroup. Um, if I want to curve this line, I'm going to drag out and tap Alt. And then as I dra it's going to make kind of a Bezier curve. And I want to add another point. I can hit Alt again, and that'll make a new point. So I'm going to just keep hitting Alt and getting a nice uh, slice curve. And it grabbed a little bit too much here, so I'm going to do that again. I'm going to hold down Control shift and Just kind of grab this and just make this all one polygroup. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing up front here. And if you double tap, it'll actually make a sharp line. So if you want to make a sharp line, you can just double tap, and that won't make it a Bezier curve. It'll make it a sharp curve. And we'll do uh, one down here as well. And let's go ahead and... Uh, and remember, if it's not positioned perfectly, you can hold down space bar. There you go. I think that'll be enough. And uh, just go through and check and make sure everything's kind of clean. Everything looks pretty good. So uh, we've already got our polygroups here. I'm going to hold down Control Shift and go back into Slice Select Rectangle. So now I'm going to hold down Control Shift and Tap. I can actually isolate along these polygroups and you can see how clean uh, those polygroups are. Actually, I do want to do one more example of... Um, let's do a three-point curve. Where's a good place to put that? Um, so I'm going to hold down Control Shift. I'm going to drag straight up. Oops. I changed it to select track. I'm going to hold down control shift and go to slice curve. I'm going to drag this around. So I'm going to slice through these two polygroups, but I'm going to terminate on that one. So it's going to make two new polygroups, one here, one here, and it's going to leave this polygroup alone. So now I have um, a couple of these that are going to have uh, three point curves, and that's going to be relevant later. Um, and actually, let's go ahead while we're thinking about it, and I'm going to put a panel in here too. That'll work. All right, so we got this guy sliced up now. 
and I'm going to show you the uh, slice curve symmetry function. I'm going to hold down control shift and we're going to do slice curve circle and it's going to have a circle stroke. If you want to make it a perfect circle, make sure you go in here and turn on square. So when I drag this out, it's going to be uh, a one to one ratio. Um, two things to, uh, to keep in mind. So let's say we want to put a circle, there's a little bit of space here. I hold down control shift and I'm going to drag this out. Now remember, slice curve doesn't have symmetry, so there's not going to be a circle over here. Another thing, is when I put a circle here and I go around to the bottom it slices all the way through the mesh and I don't necessarily want that. Luckily what you can do is hold down control shift and tap a polygroup to isolate it and then while it, while this is the only one visible you can actually slice through that mesh and if I ta uh, control shift to bring everything back everything's uh, already here. Um, now to get symmetry there's a couple different ways to do that in R5. I'm going to open up the geometry tab go to modify topology and there's a mirror and weld and there's a delete by symmetry. Uh, if I hit mirror and weld, it's actually going to mirror and weld it, but it's going to get rid of this um, this slice. So what I want to do is if I'm going to use the mirror and weld, I need to go down here to my deformation. I need to hit mirror first to swap that back over there. And then I'll go to um, my geometry tab and then hit mirror and weld. And now they're identical on both sides. Another thing you can do, let's go ahead and do all that, is go to delete by symmetry. That'll delete half of your mesh. ZBrush will evaluate it and delete half the mesh. So now you can go ahead and slice this guy up willy-nilly and then when you go around um, and then when you're done all you have to do is mirror and weld and everything will be alright. So I'm going to hold down control shift and isolate this one and let's go ahead and make a circle panel right there. Hold down control shift and click and bring everything back and you're going to see it didn't go through the mesh because that was the only polygroup visible. And now I'm ready to go. I'm going to hit mirror and weld and now I've got two identical uh, sides across the x-axis. So now that we've got our guy split up, let's go ahead and start talking about the Polish by Features. I'm going to scroll down to the Deformation menu. And here we have Polish by Features. Uh, with that closed circle over here, if you tap this, it'll be open circle, closed circle. Um, I've got, if I do Polish by Features with a closed circle, it's going to maintain my volume and polish the surface. I'm going to turn Polyframe off. Um, we have Polish, and which is just polishing the entire surface. We have Polish by Features, which is basically a combination of Polish by Groups and Polish by Crisp Edges. Crisp Edges come into play if you go up here to um, Geometry Crease. You can actually crease polygroup edges. If you have uh, something isolated, you can crease. You can hit this Crease button and it'll crease those edges and keep those edges creased. Um, and you can polish by those creased edges. Um, you can also polish by Groups, which takes into consideration all your polygroups. And Polish by Features is kind of a mix between those. So what I'm going to be doing is polishing by features. And again, with this closed hole here, if I polish by features, it's going to continue kind of smoothing your surface topology out, but it's going to maintain the overall volume, kind of like when I was talking about when we were doing the DynaMesh. If you do open circle, and turn polyframe off, uh, we'll do polish by features open circle, and you're going to see it actually really polishes the surface. It makes it really smooth, and uh, but doesn't maintain volume. So depending on what you're looking for, um, you know, use those two methods. And you don't have to crank this either. If you do polish by features all the way, it's going to really um, refine your mesh. Um, you can do a little by little and just kind of see where it's headed. See if you like that. Um, another thing to take note is go back into the polyframe mode. Wherever you have two polygroups together, it's going to smooth that, that line. So you're going to see um, see how, so this little bend right here, as we do polish by features, that little bend's going to smooth out right here because it's only got two polygroups. However, where you have three or more polygroups, so here, here's four polygroups connecting and here's three polygroups connecting, that point right there will not move. And that comes into play also when we start making panels out of this. So polish by features and panels and then polishing by features, that point will never move. So we can keep doing that and that point will stay the same and everything else will kind of smooth around it. And uh, once you get the hang of it, you actually, uh, you'll get a feel for how these polygroups interact with each other. So we'll go ahead and undo a couple of those and polish my features a little bit. So we're kind of um, just kind of polish these um, these edges out. And I think now we're ready to go ahead and pop some panels off this guy. Um, actually, let me tell you one more thing. If you want to have, uh, if you don't want to have any sharp transitions here, one thing you can do is go to Geometry and we'll look at, um, under Edge Loop, you can do Groups Loops. Let's drop this down to one. And I'm going to hit uh, this Groups Loops button. And what that's going to do is give me a group a polygroup in between every single one of these polygroups. So I can hold down control shift and actually isolate uh, just that strip all the way around. What this accomplishes is it separates everything out so that it's all uh, just two polygroups touching at once. So now when I do polish by features, everything's going to get a nice smooth 
these things are going to start, these uh, corners are going to start bending. So that's a really cool way to kind of keep everything um, <clears throat> nice and smooth. Uh, as well as, if you want to, you can hold that control shift. Again, we'll isolate that out, and then we'll control shift drag. Let's go ahead and go to our uh, select rec. And you can actually um, isolate this. So if you want to make panels with like maybe an underlying, these are like panels on top of underlying geometry or uh, machinery or anything like that, that's a really quick way to kind of just uh, have these panels split off and you can hold you can uh, go over here to your subtool menu and you can do a split and since that polygroup is hidden right now you can do a split hidden and have it uh, saved into its own uh, subtool it'll split it out into its own subtool uh, but for now let's go ahead and I'm gonna go back and undo before we got to the polygroups and I'm just gonna make panels out of this